sadly. So I just want to shout out Emma UK. She also runs a show. She has a Discord server. She does a very good job. I've listened to her show. She has some great discussions on there. Bev's been on there loads. He promotes her when he's out doing his discussions and has had me plug her show when uh, he's asked me to plug him. So yeah, go and check out Emma UK. And thank you very much indeed for the support. What they're going through is, a, is this is for me a cognitive dissonance. So they have two opposing beliefs here. They know that the horizon is not physical, as we've pointed out. They know it's not a physical horizon. It's apparent, it's light, it's refracted, whatever. And they have another belief that geometry, which is physical, deals with only the physical and tells them that the Earth is curving. So that's why they can't get past this point, because if what we're saying is true, which it, you know, it is, then they have to go with all these other ideas about the whole model, about you know, space, everything has to, they have to consider all these other things. So they're holding two beliefs, and um, I think that's probably one of the biggest stumbling blocks that, that they have. Happy coincidence. Yeah. Spurs, it's on screen right now. It, it, when you say two beliefs, it's nice with the black swan because it's it's even easier. You can give people a visual depiction of what specifically they have two of. So when Rumpus was on yesterday, it's like, well, there's just two things. You two, you don't understand these two things. No, these two horizons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One to do geometry. That would be one we don't see. It's got a straight line. This is a tangent. This point that it meets the edge of this curve that you're presupposing with an R value, that would be the tangent point. And it's R. It gives you your R value. That's what gives you this physical geometric sphere edge horizon. The R value. That's where it is. In the models, it's marked with an X and labelled horizon. It's this straight line. It's this tangent point. It's the claim that we've got physical earth curve blocking boats and buildings that's what this line is here now according to these fundies no that's the location of the geometric horizon the apparent horizon's got this donkey dick drawn to it so we do not see the required physical geometric horizon with a straight line tangent to it we don't ever see that we'd only ever see that if the sky vacuum represented by this white area here sucked out all of this gas pressure that's at high pressure not dispersing into the vacuum then we'd see this geometric horizon but only then but given that we never see this straight line tangent to a physical sphere edge claiming to prove we're on a sphere we're going to use this that we never see to then do donkey dick geometry to something we don't see because that's going to make sense we're not going to draw a tangent to here anymore no we'll draw a straight line to something we don't see, and a bent line to something that we apparently see as refraction? Well, then we haven't got geometry. We can't do the maths anymore. We haven't got two horizons, one we don't see, because if we don't see it, it's not a horizon. Now, their alma mater in this regard is Andrew Thomas Young, and he's telling people that when you're looking at this place that is only capable of thought... Let's consider having no refraction. So we're in a thought experiment where we think about not having any air. And when we think about not having any air, he then lies to his audience by double speaking them and saying we've got line of sight to the apparent horizon. Well, if it's apparent, we'd see it. But we're doing a thought experiment with no refraction, no atmospheric effects, no atmosphere. How can we have something apparent if it's only in existence when we imagine it? How can we draw a line of sight to something that only exists when we're doing a thought experiment, when we've got no refraction going on? Well, we can't. We don't have line of sight. This is how they've lied to you. Lied to you to give you two horizons, to come here so we can humiliate you and point out that we only have one one horizon it's just not geometric and your model has an absolute fundamental requirement for a geometric horizon especially given that you're going to claim it's blocking boats and buildings so your model's based on and requires an r-based geometric horizon and we're never going to see it it only exists in the model we've only got one horizon not two and the horizon we see isn't the one you're claiming proves earth's a sphere Game over, Globe. The Black Swan rides again. Yay. Precisely. And again, this is where they break down because they, even though they shouldn't be asking this question, they, they'll ask things like, well, how does the sun disappear then? 
bottom up like this. How are ships mountains? They ask, what's obscuring? And again, unless we can measure that directly, well, that question is just a question that's in the air without a measurement. Who can answer that question? And I'm just thinking some of the guys, some of the born earthers that I speak to, they, they ask, well, what's the obstruction? And um, if they want it to be a physical, of physical nature, well, then we would have to be able to measure that physical edge, as you put it, the physical horizon there, the geometric horizon. They, they simply don't have that. So there's, there's literally no measurement, no geometry, there's no science. Um, what I'd like to know exactly what makes them believe that this uh, Earth is a, is a globe, as they put it. Because they're being told it as a religious assertion from priests. Yeah. I mean, it, it definitely seems that way. I mean, that question should be for the ball earther. Is it a religious belief? If it's not a religious belief, then obviously one should be able to show that it's not religion. This is something that we have absolute data for, measurements, repeatable. Um, we don't have that. So <clears throat> it can be nothing more than what Nathan's just said. It has to be a belief. And uh, a religious one at that, because they seem to worship this this idea without any evidence to back it up whatsoever. Yeah, and they don't have two horizons. To demonstrate their belief to prove it as not being a religion, you've got to show me that we've got two horizons. One we don't see that all your maths is based on, and one we see that isn't geometric. Well, we don't. If it's a horizon, we see it. So you're not going to draw straight lines to something we don't see and call it a horizon and start doing geometry with mathematical consideration after removing atmosphere and drawing line of sight to something we don't see it's all nonsense just way of begging the question inserting an r value and having a position that moves daily with the weather asserted to be a physical geometric sphere edge when required well and their get out card hang on their get out card is refraction but andrew thomas young says that his refraction uh studies are on the plane surface but we know the Earth isn't flat. So now they have to take the refraction that they get off of a flat surface and convert it to match their religion of a sphere. So even their refraction argument has a caveat to it, which is it's all the refraction things that we have is done on the plane surface. But because I really believe the Earth isn't flat, I've got to make it work on a sphere. You see? Right. They're wrong both ways. And the beauty of this as well is that we can review and go over every observation where we have obstruction. It doesn't matter what the obstruction is or what has been obstructed. If the Glober believes that that is a physical obstruction, well, then we have a conversation because now they can say, well, yeah, this from my observational point, this is how far that physical horizon is, and this is how we know how much is hidden. I don't know if you remember those um, images where they used to put the flashing image of what should be hidden and what shouldn't be seen. They don't use that anymore because that is strictly geometry, not atmosphere. So it would be worth reviewing some of those old images where rompers would say, look, this is what the bottom, this is where it should be. This is where the building would be if this right, horizon. I'm, yeah, it's well yeah? worth looking back on those times they said, look, the reason you're missing 30 feet, in other words, they qualify with the geometric sphere edge horizon assumption based on R that they have a physical blockage of the horizon. And then say, hang on a second, this horizon's not a physical geometric sphere edge. We do not see the geometric horizon. That would only be there if you removed all the atmosphere. You're taking into consideration that you've got this model and we've debunked it. The black swan image demonstrates beyond all certitude that we do not have a geometric horizon. And that's exposed this part of the rhetoric where they declare that they don't have it. They'll also say that it's apparent and you've got line of sight to it. But it's only when you're doing a little thought experiment of removing the atmosphere. That's not what Al Biruni did, I might add. So this is all kind of the web of lies exposing itself. Starting to come apart at the seams. Because we don't have two horizons and that's where we've reached in the argument. We've got Andrew Thomas Young making declarations of a horizon that they're going to make geometric considerations with, the one Al Biruni measured, and one that exists in reality that we're going to draw a bent line to. Well, he's not going to be doing geometry then, because he'd need a physical tangent point. 
the one that's blocking the buildings or was and like you're saying let's go back and have a look and look a little look and a little laugh when they used to tell us that the physical sphere edge was blocking stuff because it isn't it's just a thought experiment it's just a religious belief it's mm -hmm. It's almost like we're kicking ourselves now because if we understood this argument from Isle of Man or way before that they were arguing that this to be the physical horizon, if we understood what we were actually saying or what was being put forward, we, this could have been ended a long time ago. Um, it just seems now, um, you know, we've been caught up in this period where we can't take this argument forward to, to the levels that we want it to. So it's just unfortunate, like I say, we should Not be reviewing every single... I was, about to, uh, I was about to agree with you, because I've said exactly that before. I was like, when the penny dropped for me about the Black Swan, I'm like, my God, the amount of time we wasted on the Isle of Man, we could have cut through that crap in an instant if we'd have understood mm -hmm. that they're not drawing any tangent lines, that every time they say the word refraction, they're doing donkey dick geometry, and it's not geometry anymore, but they're still asserting a physical blockage, a physical sphere edge horizon getting in the way. The things in the distance being loomed up and res with respect to it, to quote Rumpus. You know it's looming mm -hmm. because of its position with respect to the horizon, end quote, the Rumpus. So as soon as you say, oh, well, hold on a second. If we're dealing with refraction, then we do not have a geometric horizon. How are you going to draw a tangent line? Suddenly that would be the end of the argument for the model because you can't draw tangent lines to something physical anymore. It doesn't work both mm. ways. You haven't got two horizons. And the horizon they're drawing a tangent line to would be a physical one, geometric, non-refracted. So you can't have it both ways, lads. Suddenly the model falls apart. And when Al B came in, this is available to members early, so it'll go out on Saturday to non-members on my second channel. But if you're a member on this channel, you can watch it now. But that argument with Alan B, me getting furious in the live show, followed by arguing with Rumpus, with him telling us we don't understand these two positions, meaning two horizons... That was why I got so angry with him. Yeah, if I'd have known all along that you don't have a geometric horizon, you can't draw a tangent line to this physical point you're claiming is blocking the Isle of Man, where's the beach, where's the beach, I would have cut through that crap in an instant. It was just religious chanting. It was rhetoric based on a model side on Muppet vision, begging the question, proof of nothing, perspective hijacking earth curve calculators, an assumption of R, and a position we don't have, ever, can't see, suddenly being a position that's blocking the Isle of Man with stuff refracted. Makes no sense. It would have fallen by the wayside if we'd have known. Hence me getting so angry at them. How dare they come here for this amount of time to argue for a year solid that we've got a physical sphere edge when it's a bloody thought experiment? The amount of times Rumpus would draw diagrams saying, look, here is your physical horizon and this is the object looming over it. And we were just getting absolutely frustrated and saying, no, we're actually looking at the object here. We're seeing it in a straight line. He's like, no. This is where your observation, your height, this is where the horizon is, and this is how much refraction um, the object is looming. And we got into all kinds of super looming and hyena and all that kind of... Uh, it was, it's unbelievable that we actually went through... I feel like we were... It's, it's unbelievable. But, yeah. Right. Re right recognize this early up. on. Yeah, go ahead. Up, but even though you can look back and say, wow, we could have nipped this at the bud earlier. What it did allow is for them to make a claim that we now could go back to that's been recorded because now they're saying the exact opposite and using our argument of perspective.